What is up guys, Bisectatron here with the next attack strategy video. This is a Town Hall 11 one. I know you guys have been itching for some Town Hall 11 content and this is a brand new strategy I just saw pretty much today. Now it was shown to me by uh, one of my viewers, went over, visited his clan and saw it for myself and gotta say, it's pretty cool and it, it works very well against the right base. So a big shout out to Genghis Dom. Uh, both of these are his attacks we're going to be looking at today. We'll take a look at the replays. We'll also break down the bases and kind of uh, let you guys know what type of base it works on. Because against the right base, it is a very powerful strategy, a very viable one. And um, it's kind of cool seeing the Falcon at Town Hall 11, uh, especially this variation with the bat spells. So... And also, if you look at this attack, the queen gets locked onto by the uh, single Inferno. She dies, and because this attack was kind of flawed in that, if the wall wrecker was a little earlier, the queen wouldn't have died. It just shows how powerful this is, because despite that all of that, it still works. So the basic idea is you do a falcon, where the queen walk goes into a bunch of uh, valks and bowlers. Went ahead and used a jump here just because there was dead space, so we need to make sure the Valks went to the core. Typically, you'll use two Rages and you won't bring that jump. And then basically dropping the Bat Spell on one side of like that ring that's left over once the core is cleared out. And then using Balloons to tank the Wizard Towers. Now, the, the purpose of these back-end Balloons, typically bring six, seven, eight of them, is to tank the back-end splash damage while the Bats move through. In this case, very effective usage, tanking that wizard tower there, as you can see, allowing the bats to just crush this base. They will start to go down at the very last few defenses here uh, because the wizard tower plus the Tesla and a few archer towers start to take them out. Um, but as often is the case, there's a lot of Valks and Bowlers left up, the healers still up. So everything will wrap around and finish it off. But that's basically the idea. And it does work with Multi-Infernos as well. We'll take a look at an attack on a base with two Multi-Infernos, I believe. At least one. Um, where you can see the Balloons can also tank the streams of the Multi-Infernos. So it's a pretty cool attack strategy. It does require the right base. Um, but it can work against bases with multis and with single infernos. Um, so let's stop for a moment and kind of break down the base we just looked at. Okay, so here's the base we just watched the attack on. We're going to take a minute or two, break it down, talk about why it was a good base for the attack. Then we'll break down the next base and watch the replay on that. So first of all, big fan of the queen walk. You have to have a place to start your queen walk. And typically... To be able to correctly utilize the wall wrecker for this attack, you want to have your entry point somewhat opposite the town hall, in this case over on this side. Now I could see uh, possible variations where you don't use the wall wrecker, you let the Valks just swing through the walls, maybe you use the stone slammer on the back end almost as a tank for the bats. We don't have a replay of that, but that could be a possible variation, but generally speaking, um, you want to enter opposite the town hall and be able to use the wall record to tank a little bit and, and open up the walls as well. So, finds a great opportunity for a queen walk because it's not like that obvious, but here, um, drop the queen here, uh, balloon, baby dragon on that cannon, that's enough to take it out. And you can see because we have this gap between these defenses, um, the queen just steps up, goes here, then goes up. So a good job funneling on the queen. Wasn't especially obvious how to do that, but that works out nicely. Then um, the only uh, mistake, I guess, was that the queen or the inferno locks onto the queen, uses the ability, that's fine. Needed to get the wall record down a little earlier because the uh, inferno then locks on again, and this time it kills the queen. And you want to have the queen up, especially um, for the, the falcon attack because it adds more range that the bowlers even themselves don't have. But anyway, uh, uses the king on the other side, uh, classic falcon, and then coming through here. I like the jump as I mentioned because typically you're not going to be jumping much. You're going to let the Valks or the Wall Wreckers just go through the walls. But here there's so much dead space and even here that it was needed so the Valks didn't like go out and target something over here or kind of do some kind of weird pathing thing. So um, if there is that kind of dead space, you're going to need to, to bring a jump. But typically you'll just bring two Rages instead of the jump. Uh, also has the heal spell. Um, for the core plus the Warden's ability. So lots of stuff to take care of the Bowlers and the Valks with. Um, another reason this worked is both heroes are kind of towards the core. That pulls everything in. That's what you want to look for, uh, especially if it's the right angle. The Queen's going to pull things through the wall and just allow the, uh, the troops to stay in the right location and get all these high-value uh, buildings. 
Then finally for the bats, if you look at the back end, we have uh, splash damage here. Uh, that's one. Then we have, this is two. And then up here, I guess, is three. In terms of the splash damage, and by splash damage, I mean either wizard towers or multi-infernos, because we're, ta we're talking air targeting splash damage. Um, there's three buildings. Obviously, the multi-infernos are more dangerous. The wizard towers don't do quite as much uh, damage to the bats in terms of taking them out as quickly, usually. Um, but there's three of them on the back end. That's what you want to try to count. But as you can see here, it can easily be tanked by balloons. This one easily tanked by balloons if the timing is correct. A lot of it is timing. Um, this one not so much, but it's okay. It's just one and it's kind of towards the back end. So the assumption is there'll be plenty of Valks and Bowlers. And the Queen, if she had not died at the beginning, left up plus the healers to, uh, to take all that out even if the bats can't quite finish because of that third wizard tower. So that's what you want to look for um, in the base. Just briefly, a good opening queen walk that you can do. Uh, Valks, uh, bowlers, you want them staying in the core, so heroes that'll pull them in. Good value in the core, the eagle, there's a bunch of expos in there. And then the splash damage from the back end to be in locations that can either be taken out initially by your push or can be tanked by balloons. Um, so that's all good on this base. That's why it worked. Let's move on to the next base. So this next base is actually one of my creations. As I was over there, I just popped one up I had in one of my slots for a friendly challenge. And it's a pretty solid base. I mean, it's built to be anti-bat spell to some extent. And uh, it's relatively new. So I was skeptical as to if this would work. And uh, we did a few friendly challenges in some different bases and some of them held well. This one uh, did get three-starred. wasn't the very first try, but this was definitely a good strategy for this base, and um, we'll talk about why it worked, basically. So, the start, there was a great queen walk start that even I didn't quite see just looking at this base initially, and that is taking out, like, a baby dragon taking out this area, dropping the queen here, so she steps up on actually this side of the corner, takes that out, but the cannon pulls her around this way. So that's a nice way to uh, basically get this compartment almost cleared out besides the wizard tower and then have her go the correct way. Um, it's better than dropping her over here and having her go that way. Gets more buildings and better, uh, more predictable pathing. Uh, then from there goes ahead and I believe uses the, the king over in this area, gets some good defensive value. Then just comes in, Valks, Bowlers, no need for a jump, and perfect. Here, look at this. The Queen's going to pull everything in. That's what you want, the Queen and the Core pulling everything in. So they come through. They're going to get that Multi-Inferno. Now, in this case, the Eagle is not ideally placed. It should be a little to the left if this was a better base for it. But um, because of that, the Eagle actually doesn't go down for quite a while. So it, it does some damage on, on the troops. Um, but the push goes fine, everything gets taken out, and now you're wondering, where the, what do the bats do? Because there's this multi-inferno left up. Well, basically, what you for this attack strategy, you have to kind of play the bats by ear. See when the right time is to drop them. And in this case, it worked out better just to, to wait and let everything just kind of come around the outside once it got through, start coming this way, and pretty much everything was dead, then the bats were dropped, and uses balloons on like these defenses, tanking streams of the multi-inferno. That way when all the bats are dropped here, only one or two streams is free to target bats. And you guys would be surprised how quickly the inferno goes down and how much or how little damage rather it's able to do to the bats because it's being tanked by balloons. Um, and then I think this wizard tower went down to the queen. So from there, there was nothing to kind of bother this inferno. So sometimes you'll have that ring around the outside where you just drop the bats like the first attack and they just move around. You tank with balloons as needed. In this attack, the uh, everything just kind of cut through in one big push and there wasn't a great place to drop the bats until the kill squad made it around, took out the wizard tower, and then the inferno was able to be just completely targeted and uh, tanked by balloons. So we'll take a look at the replay to give you guys a better idea, then we'll wrap this up. All right, here we are with the attack. Um, you can see here, this time, like I said before, bringing 
two rages. This is the more typical spell composition I'd recommend for this attack. The heal spell is nice because as everything's rushing in, especially at Town Hall 11, there's so much damage. The CC troops, the Eagle, Infernos, Queen, uh, plus all the regular defenses, you know, Expos, Wizard Towers, so much damage. Even the healers are not going to be able to do the job properly, especially if they're still on the Queen for a few moments. So the heal spell is nice for the initial kind of push. Then use the Warden's ability a little bit later um, as, as the troops spread out more and as the heal would become a little bit less effective because the Warden obviously has a much wider range than the heal spell does. So anyway, everything moving through. Um, the King did a great job clearing out that other funnel. Pathing is perfect, or uh, the funneling rather is perfect. The Queen's going to pull everything in. Um, the Ice Golem does freeze, but typically what happens when you encounter an Ice Golem is the healers continue to work. In this case, the uh, air defense does knock a few of them off, but they continue to heal while everything was frozen, which was very uh, nice there. Things start to go off to the left. That's just the way the Wall Wrecker pathed on this base. Um, so everything's moving off to the left and then going to not uh, target the Eagle for a little while. And as you can see, um, what I was saying is that everything kind of goes up to the top here. Still has quite a few troops. I mean, the Wall Wrecker is still intact. Uh, Valk's Bowler is still alive. The Queen with the Warden kind of walking around. Just there, the Bowlers pop out of the uh, Wall Wrecker. So everything is going to move around. This would have been a lot nicer if the Eagle had, had actually gone down. This would have been a lot smoother of an attack. But it's going to start taking out like Bowlers and Valk's one by one here. Uh, the Queen will survive for a while because she has some healing on her and because all those Valks are going to run out in, in front and tank. There's actually one Valk going through the wall here trying to get to that Eagle. I think it actually does but gets shot down before it can quite take it out. So the Eagle is just sitting there. Um, here are the balloons. Like I said, there's still six bat spells if you can believe, but the patience was incredible. Waits for the Queen to come all the way around and take out that Wizard Tower because the Wizard Tower needed to go down in order for that Inferno to be isolated tanked by balloons, and you guys saw how fast those bats took it out. Uh, and then there's nothing else that the bats really have to fear. It's just an, uh, like the Eagle and like a Tesla. And the bats actually do the majority of the cleanup on this base, which is something you don't see that often. So incredible stuff. Um, big shout out to the Top Guns. Seems like a good active clan and Genghis uh, Dom for inventing, I want to say. I'm not, he's definitely the one using it uh, so far. Uh, this attack strategy that's pretty good at Town Hall 11 against the right base. So, like I said, guys, look for the Queen Walk. Um, look for the things to pull everything in, just like you would at a Town Hall 10 Falcon. And then look for the uh, the Bat Spell uh, on the back end. Where is the splash damage, and how can you tank with balloons? But that'll do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bisectatron out.